This is the North Georgia Life Podcast. Embrace life where you live. Welcome back to the North Georgia Life Podcast. It's Jake, your host, and I am I'm doubly ashamed and embarrassed. Um, this is an episode that I recorded that I thought I published and then I didn't publish uh, from like a few months ago. So just... I'm eternally sorry, Fort Yargo. Um, I we just had some things going on, <laughs> so uh, no, it's uh, part of it uh, is my fault, and part of it is just life uh, between uh, moving and some medical stuff going on. Uh, we just we got sidetracked, and again, like I said, I thought we had published this before uh, we had all that going on, and clearly uh, it did not happen. So it's a hundred percent on me, my bad, uh, but. Fort Yarger State Park is a super, super easy to access uh, state park in the North Georgia area uh, because of location. And it's one of those parks that's kind of unassuming. Like it doesn't, it kind of sneaks up on you. You drive by and you just kind of keep on going. Like I say in the podcast, just just pull in. Just pull in, you'll stay a while. Uh, learn a, bit, a little bit about the, the park and the area and what's literally in a lot of our backyards. Um, in the area and check out their gift shop like I say in the episode like the gift shop is really cool like kudos to whoever is doing the gift shops for these state parks like you're you're killing it you know how to find us on Facebook Instagram North Georgia Life Podcast you can email us with future suggestions on places that you would like to uh, to hear or see on the podcast the email is North Georgia Life Podcast at gmail.com and with that we're going to go ahead and get started Welcome back to the North Georgia Life Podcast. This is Jake, your host, and today we are at a, we were just talking a location that I came across probably 20 years ago, and this is embarrassing. I live, I don't know, right now, 15, 20 minutes from this place, and it's the first time I've set foot on the property, and I'm ashamed and embarrassed to call myself a quasi-local, but we are at Fort Yargo State Park in, uh, we're in Winder, correct? That's the city. So, if you if you've not been here i would say just pull in and you'll probably stay a while because it's a beautiful park the the property is way bigger than than what most of us think because honestly most of us if you're in the area it's like you drive by for your for you and like you know it's a thing and they got you know a few things a year but you don't really know what's actually here um and that's why that's why we're here so so we're here today with william white who's the assistant park manager and uh a georgia native but not a winder native um so uh give us a little bit of backstory on you and um and ultimately how you got to be here at fort yargo all right yeah so i i grew up in marietta area um uh, went to high school over there and uh i was a Boy Scout, literally all all the years I could be, started out in the Cub Scouts, worked my way through, and uh, through college, I got I went to college actually down in Savannah to okay. get a history degree. Okay. And uh, in Georgia, all the public historic sites are part of the state parks. Mm-hmm. So when I was graduating, I wanted to work in public history, work at or museums or historic sites, and so the uh, the place to apply was in the state parks and historic sites division. Yeah. And so. Have not worked at a historic site yet, but in, <laughs> in, in the uh, in that 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 path. But so uh, you so you're telling me your college degree is not exactly where you ended up, at, but but it, it was a good link between. That's uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Got Great. you interested. What what made you pick that major to begin with? Just out of curiosity. Well, um, in high school, I got the opportunity. Uh, we did something called like a senior project, mm-hmm. and I got to do a sort of quasi internship with the National Park Service regional office in Atlanta, and we helped do some research over in Anniston, Alabama for what would become the Freedom Riders National Monument. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was fantastic. Wow. And, and getting to work with the historians of the National Park Service, uh, was it was just eye-opening to see that you can kind of make that a career. Because mm-hmm. uh, I'd always loved history, but, you know, it's it's history. You don't yeah. usually think about that becoming a job. Yeah, unless you're a high school teacher. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yes. Yeah, <laughs> um, that's, yeah. So, uh, so, awesome. And you've been... Uh, so, how long ago uh, did you get out of uh, get your degree? So I graduated in May of 2020 during oh, all wow. the COVID craziness. You, um, were, so you were the first non-graduating class. That's right. Yeah. That's awesome, <laughs> and I'm sorry. <laughs> I, you know, it was it was okay. I got to uh, we had our sort of graduation, quote unquote, on uh, it was like they did like a Facebook Live thing, and yeah. so I 
you know, I'd moved back in with my parents briefly and yeah. it's like 9.30 in the morning, sat in my pajamas and put my robe on and watched my graduation. So, I mean, pros and cons to it, but <laughs> it was very comfortable. I, I don't know whether to feel sad for you or happy for you because graduation is a long day um, and most of us don't remember anything <laughs> about it. I don't remember... Uh, I don't, I, I, I vaguely remember my, I couldn't even tell you which building we were in when we graduated because they split our college up into different buildings. And I literally was in a building I'd never been in before. I, I remember the uh, professor that finished our, our um, graduation commencement or whatever. He quoted Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. <laughs> That's about my extent of my memory. So I'm sorry, and you didn't miss much. <laughs> yes, so, okay. You transitioned here. Um, and you've been here for how long? Uh, so not quite a year. I started in, uh, early November last year, okay. 2021. Okay. Um, so for people who have not been um, here to the park, um, and, and this is one of, and I, I'm almost finding this, again, sadly universal. I, I realize at some point I need to actually get out more, um, <laughs> but most of my, my day-to-day is, uh, is just is driving um, and and emails and stuff. Um, that's the blessing and curse of, of real estate. I get to see a lot, but don't necessarily always get to do as much as I'd like to. But the state parks, almost universally, all the ones we've been to have, like, it is eye-opening to me, having been here in Georgia for 17-ish years, how much there is at each state park that I have absolutely no clue about. So. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of ask you some feeder questions, if you will, but kind of get into um, all of the, the sights, th- sounds, experiences, things you guys have anytime, things you have scheduled, you know, at different times in the year. Um, so you've got over 1,800 acres yes, yeah. that is dedicated park here in Winder, Georgia, which is a massive footprint for a state park um, that's literally in a lot of people's backyards and just don't know. Yeah, it, uh, you're exactly right. We, we, tons of people's backyards actually go right into the park, uh, which is interesting. Uh, certain times of year when we have to close it off for uh, different events, uh, mm-hmm. trying to find all the, the ins and outs and how to rope things Make off. Make sure the family reunions don't bleed into the trails. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you're, we have, I think it's, I think the exact number is uh, 1,816 acres, mm-hmm. but yeah, slightly over 1,800. Uh, our lake, most of the time, is 260 acres. We actually had to uh, drain it over the winter, and mm-hmm. it's been a lot slower in filling back up than we'd hoped. But yeah. most of the time, it's 260 acres. Yep. And uh, so we have we can usually have John boats. We've got two boat ramps that you can uh, put out onto, mm-hmm. and I believe it's up to 10 horsepowers on our lake or, yeah. um, for boats. And you, uh, the the lake was drained for some maintenance. Uh, yeah, so it was uh, mainly natural resource management uh, over here by the visitor center. Uh, I'm going to point to you, but so like behind <laughs> it and, and to our right, we is where two creeks uh, lead, uh, sort of lead into the uh, what becomes the lake. Mm-hmm. And over the decades, it just sort of filled up with soot and debris down there. Mm-hmm. So we uh, uh, we drained it so that uh, we could get those big uh, tracks and stuff in there, mm-hmm. clear out a lot of that uh, that debris that built up and yeah so we can make the lake deeper and help with the flow of water into yeah the lake. yeah yeah so you got a little bit more lake to fill up now yes yeah. we do <laughs> <laughs> um and you've got uh you've got all kinds of outdoor like this is such a great spot for families to kill some time on the weekend or make a whole you know extended experience um so you have talk us through some of the uh, the the campsites the overnight accommodations um, like you've got lots of things, you've got lots of options. Um, talk us through if somebody wants to do a long weekend, a quick overnight trip, get out of Dodge for two weeks, you know, what are, what are some of those things they can experience here? Sure. Yeah. So, um, we do have, I believe a 52 site campground, mm-hmm. uh, and, and most of those are going to be, uh, sites where you can bring an RV onto, or you can put a tent on there as well. And uh, we also have, I believe, um, eight tent walk-in sites, which are just mm-hmm. uh, just for tents. Uh, we also do have 12 cottages at the moment, mm-hmm. and we're, we're building more. Uh, we're gonna, uh, a little past our visitor center, we, have, we had three of our oldest cottages we tore down. We're gonna build uh, four new ones that are gonna be 
big and brand new and really nice. Yeah. Uh, those are, I believe, two of them are going to house eight people, and two will be able to house ten. Oh, wow. But, uh, yeah, so yeah. that'll be nice. Um, a a ten-person cottage, that's, <laughs> that is now a thing. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, I, I feel like that could potentially be some, there some uh, long nights yeah. waiting to happen, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll address that when we get there. <laughs> um, so, the, so, so the cottages for, for people who are maybe not your Boy Scout wilderness explorer, cottages maybe more that speed? Yeah, absolutely. So cottages, like uh, we we call them cottages, they're very similar to what you would think of as a cabin. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're they're buildings, they're houses that have air conditioning, a full kitchen, bathroom, like full bathrooms, bedrooms, all the works. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's you're still coming and able to experience the outdoors, but you can go sleep in a bed at the end of the night. Yes. And, uh, and have access to everything you'd have access to at home. And then and then you have the opposite extreme of that, which is you put all your stuff on your backpack. And you walk in and you set up so, camp. So uh, we don't really have a ton of that here. We, so our tent walk-in sites, oh, okay. um, they're 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 fairly easily accessible too. There, you do have to walk into the site, but okay. it's, uh, there's a, a dedicated parking lot right there. Oh, okay. And it's, I think the furthest one from the parking lot is maybe 100 feet. Okay. Uh, there are plenty of other parks in the state though that have backpacking, um, right? Uh, sort of tent walk-in sites. If you yes. Will. Yeah. We do for uh, groups like. Uh, uh, scout groups, churches, we do have a primitive site in uh, Area B of our park okay. that uh, you can rent, and it's it's a primitive site. It, I think it has a water spigot hmm. and doesn't really have anything else outside of outside of that. No electricity, um, no, no bathroom facilities. And that's also where you can take your kids to show them how good they have it. That's right, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You tell them when your day, when you know, when when it was your day that you didn't even have running water. You know? <laughs> um, you've got lots of outdoor recreation here, like lots of outdoor recreation. So, uh, for somebody who is coming overnight or is just coming in for the day, you know, they want to take a Saturday, they want to take, you know, play hooky on a Friday or Monday or whatever, um, and they come here. What are some of those things that they can experience here um, that they may not have to? may not have to bring all the stuff themselves. Sure, yeah. So, um, like I mentioned before, we do have a 260-acre lake. Um, you can bring your own boat if you have it. We do rent out canoes, kayaks, and paddle boards. We also have these things called aqua cycles, where it's like you're, you're pedaling, uh, from, uh, like pedaling instead of using your hands for like a paddle. Uh -huh. uh, so, for water recreation, we have all that available. You can bring your own, or we do have some of those smaller craft available for rent. Okay. Uh, also, over there, we've got a beach. Uh, that is a, has a swimming area in it. It's been closed all this summer due to mm -hmm. that uh, yeah. drainage of the lake, but most summers it's open and very popular. Um, uh, so we do have mini golf and disc golf available. Um, if you want to do uh, biking, we have over 20 miles of trails for biking and hiking. Uh, we have uh, our dedicated biking trail, a mountain biking trail is 12 and a half miles, I believe. And then the rest of that, our, our yellow trail, which is sort of our big hiking trail, it's a seven mile loop around the lake. Mm -hmm. uh, we also do have one paved trail that's uh, one, it's 1 1.1 miles total. Mm -hmm. It's just an, a down and back. It's called a Wilkins Green, the Wilkins Greenway Trail. And it, okay. it starts at the visitor center and actually goes into Winder. That was a partnership with the local community. Okay. And uh, the, the nice thing, if you're not a, um, uh, let's say, um, an alpine hiker uh, is winder is not super steep uh, so you don't have a ton of of topo changes so you're not gonna uh, i th think kill your knees um it's not flat but it's not mountains either so. that's right yeah we're, we're in the piedmont region of georgia so it's it's starting to get a little more hilly but it's not by no means the uh, appalachian foothills yeah yeah, so it's it's a good starter ground, you know. So if you if you'd really like to go up to the North Georgia mountains and do hiking, but you're not sure if your family <laughs> if your family should accompany you, this is a good place to see. How do they do on a hike and winder? Um, so with the lake, you have fishing available as well. Is that year round? Is that do you have to have your uh, DNR fishing license? What's Yes, so we do have fishing available year round. Uh, you do, if you're an adult, I believe I believe it's 16 and up, I don't have that exact number. Uh, you do have to have a fishing permit and you okay. get that through uh, Wildlife Resources Division. Right. Uh, you can get that online, gadnr.org, you can find information on there. And I believe also a lot of like the Bass Pro Shops and Walmarts, mm -hmm. uh, you yeah. can get them there as well. Um, what's your, so you've been here roughly a year. What's your, what's your favorite part in, in your year so far? 
Wow. Um, it's, it's been a blast. It's, uh, so I spent most of my college years in Savannah and mm -hmm. it was very flat there. Yes. And, very uh, flat. <laughs> yes. And so there were some hiking trails there and, uh, coming back here, uh, you know, I, I grew up being in Boy Scouts, like I said, and we hike everywhere. Mm -hmm. So coming back here, like you said, it's been kind of a nice introduction getting back into, into hiking on mm -hmm. trails that actually do have some elevation. Mm -hmm. um, it's, and it's not overwhelming, but I, I try to hike the, uh, the inner trail or like our, our yellow trail hiking trail at least once or twice a month. Mm -hmm. uh, but getting back out there and, and just being right here on the trails is mm -hmm. fantastic. Mm -hmm. Any uh, best moments, best memories, funniest stories, anything like that you can share that's not going <laughs> to well, yeah. um, give any park secrets away? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Well, we, so we do have a, uh, an interpretive center where we house a, uh, a turtle and a snake. Our snake's an Eastern King snake. And uh, she loves to, she's an escape artist. Oh. And so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I'm all of a sudden looking around the room right now. <laughs> well, it's, it's in another building, so we're, okay, we're good. Well. But um, we, we share that building with the game wardens who have an office in there. And uh, one of the game wardens just hates snakes. So. I love um, this story already. Oh, yeah. So there, there's one time that uh, I got a call from the game warden and he was just freaking out because he looked in there and the snake's on the tank and so he's, he's frantically looking around mm -hmm. and um, he goes to the restroom in there and snake's hanging out in the bathroom with him. Nope. So. <laughs> no. Nope. Mm -mm. Resignation. <laughs> <laughs> but so we, we came and got the snake and put it all away. So that was, that's a, always a fun story. The, that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's a good one. Uh, I had a, <laughs> I was looking at a uh, inspection report last night and I, this is th this one job I could not do. I, there's several jobs I couldn't do. One is a, is a home inspector because they had a picture of a snake skin on the basement, you know, poured wall. And I was like, uh-uh, no, mm -mm, no way. I'm, I'm gone. Last day, first day, doesn't matter. <laughs> like, we're done. So, um, yeah. Um, so you guys also, I saw on your website, you have different events, uh, races, biking, running, maybe other things. I don't know if you have any, uh, if there's like summer camps or anything like that, that you do that are seasonal things, but, um, because people are going to you know, pick this up at different points in the year. Uh, what are some of those things you guys, uh, have here at the park? Yeah. So we, we've got a lot of events and races year round. Um, one of our, one of the we don't usually host them, but a lot of partners uh, come in. One of the uh, most common ones is called Dirty Spokes, and they do both bike races and uh, uh, running trail races. Okay. Uh, we haven't had one in a couple months, but they they usually come, and it'll I mean it'll be a full day event. It'll just fill up the entire park. Mm. Uh, it's it's a blast, and they you can find that information on uh, on the gastateparks.org website and go to our our uh, our specific page on there. Mm -hmm. It'll have some of the events listed. And that'll have information on uh, the name of the event and where to sign up. Okay. Uh, and also on, I believe on Facebook, we are on Facebook. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know if we always post those events on there. We, we try our best, mm -hmm. but uh, our website will definitely have all that information on there. Okay. Do you have summer camps or anything like that here? So we don't have summer camps uh, ourselves. There's actually a, um, um, a, a private camp within the park called uh, Camp Twin Lakes. And okay. they, Hosts a lot of diff different people with uh, different disabilities mm -hmm. throughout the year, um, and so they they do a great job. And they're they host camp they host camps all summer long. They also do weekend camps all summer long. They just finished up their summer season. Uh, camp Twin Lakes does a great job, and uh, we're we're very happy they're here. So yeah, if you're, if, that's um, awesome. You you know someone or have someone who uh, has some kind of disability? Uh, check out Camp Twin Lakes. They 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 they'd love to have you here, and we'd love, awesome. love to have you there. Yeah, that's great to know. I didn't I didn't realize that. So, so let's go and uh, apologize. I got so distracted uh, when we started uh, going all, over all of the uh, facts, features, and highlights of the park that we didn't get into the background of the park. So, uh, give us for anybody that is just a history buff like you that would like to know some of the backstory um, history of the state park here itself. Um, kind of give us the highlights of of that. Sure. So. Uh has the name Fort Yargo in it, and when you're in the visitor center, you can look across the lake and see a log, what looks like a log cabin. Mm -hmm. uh, that is Fort Yargo. Uh, so back in the 1790s, uh, the 
what was the state of Georgia, or still is, what would become the state of Georgia was kind of still expanding, and this was Creek territory. And so through various different treaties, this land was ceded into uh, the state of Georgia's hands. And uh, Fort Yargo was one of, I believe, three forts built in sort of the general area to uh, um, protect the expansion of uh, Georgian settlers into mm -hmm. the area. And uh, so I don't, as far as I know, there was never any um, pitched combat or anything at this fort, mm -hmm. but that's, that's sort of where it comes from. And okay. the fort itself was originally a couple miles uh, southeast of here, okay. uh, but still same general area. It was on the property of what is today the park. Okay. Um, during the uh, 19th century, this was, this, what is the park now was split up into multiple different homesteads and uh, um, private properties. There's actually a cemetery on the park from one of the families that used to own part of the, the land here. Uh, going into the 20th century, uh, the, the land started to be sort of collected and gathered and would eventually become a park, I believe in 55, mm -hmm. uh, somewhere in the 1950s. I don't have that number right off the top of my head. Um, but when I, I talked about Camp Twin Lakes, uh, the, uh, one of the cool things about this park was it was originally um, built as a Camp, camp Willoway, which is the first uh, uh, camp for disabled persons of its kind anywhere in the country. And so we have a, uh, um, a shelter next to us that was built specifically to have access for disabled people. Uh, mm. This was decades before the ADA was even um, wow. a thought with any, for anybody. And uh, Jimmy Carter uh, was heavily involved in, in getting Camp Willoway and uh, Fort Yargo State Park set up. And so it's, uh, it, it is pretty cool. And we actually had our 50 year anniversary of Camp Willoway and what's now uh, Camp Twin Lakes uh, being created just uh, just a couple months ago. Hmm. Wow. But, yeah. um, and uh, from a from a uh, history and history perspective, so as someone who pursued a um, a degree in history and um, has a, a an obvious um, you know love for those historical things, because if you didn't I didn't I don't think you would work here uh, <laughs> um, or uh, for the uh, uh, so is it DNR is actually who yeah so you're we're, with? Um, we're the um, state parks and historic sites division uh, and that's a division within the uh, Georgia Department of Natural Resources okay, okay. Um, what would you, what would your guidance be to anybody who um, is um, you know does have a, uh, a love for history or an interest in history um, that maybe is, maybe has the outdoor gene, you know, kind of like you had in the, in the Boy Scouts um, in terms of how to get from, okay, that's kind of what I like. I've got this, and maybe it's not history. Maybe it's, you know, maybe it's sports or music or whatever to actually getting a job where you enjoy coming to work every day. It's like, what a novel concept. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so it, it takes, uh, you know, you have to be sort of dedicated to doing that, and uh, you have to make some, you know, sacrifices here and there. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't say this at all, at all in a negative way. It's not the highest paying job in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I make enough though, and I'm very happy with this job. Mm -hmm. You have to, sometimes you have to be willing to, you know, mm -hmm. um, find, find sacrifices here and there. Um, the, but if you, if you want to really follow, a, a, follow your passion, um, you know, go to school for it, study it, and, uh, find ways to be connected within that. When I was in college, I volunteered at a historic site in Savannah and eventually was able to do part-time work at a historic site as well. Mm. Um, so do the work you can and uh, start building those connections and getting that experience. Yeah. Uh, whether it be volunteer or um, a professional, any, anything helps. And, and that's history, science, biology. Um, there's always opportunities available. Yeah. And uh, the, uh, there, to, to look for a career within the DNR specifically, go to uh, gadnr.org and there'll be a career tab at the bottom. And uh, there's a list that's updated almost daily with any, any open positions. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'm, yeah. I so, so, yeah. No, that's uh, the, what, you, what you said towards the end there, uh, I thought was especially important. At some point it comes down to your willingness to do which only you can do to get you where you want to be. Um, and that's, you know, I've, I've found that uh, over the course of, of my life and, and um, you know, people that I meet. And it's one of these things, you know, so many times we look at things, you know, the current situation, like that's the thing. And it's like, no, that could just be the bridge to get you from where you're at to the thing that you really want to be at. 
and you don't you, you're going over the bridge backwards you don't even know you're you don't even know that's happening um but it's it's you know very simple that so many things in life can happen just through a conversation with someone you know like we are at you're in savannah you're doing you know uh, a menial you know nothing task but you happen to have a conversation one day with someone who knows someone or is connected or used to do whatever and you know, that's what I, I, I try to encourage people that I, that I talk to if they're not where they want to be. It's like, you just need to keep talking to people. You, you know what I mean? And I, I'm not the, I'm not the person that loves the network. Like I, I'm kind of a, um, outgoing person in, in work, but like when I'm home, I just like to hang out and be home. Like I don't, not I'm trying to run like a game show at home <laughs> with my neighborhood, like, but but from a from a perspective of just understanding, at some point it's 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 my job to to do what I have to do, um, and one of the themes over over um, all these different uh, in, industry segments and life segments in, in areas of our community in North Georgia is the people who are. Um, I don't know if successful is the right term, but they're, they're happiest with where they're at in life and their pursuits. We're all willing to do the things that are not maybe the most glamorous things or whatever. And, and only they, only they were the person who could do it. So, um, wherever that can help you in life, you know, huzzah. (laughs) So, um, all right. Uh, one, uh, before we wrap up every episode, uh, one question I always like to ask, um, which is the lightning round question and has nothing to do with anything we've talked about at all. So, uh, today's lightning round question, let's say in the last year, and it doesn't have to be work-related, the best purchase you've made for under a hundred dollars. This is a hard one for this me too. This is a really hard one. Like, cause I'm like, oh, mm. uh, I'm, I'm a big sports fan okay. and, um, uh, so I got to go to a Stripers game okay. uh, recently when, yeah. when we moved up here, um, and they had like a little like an all-you-can-eat night thing, and I think it was like thirty, forty bucks a person. It wasn't like a little expensive for a minor league game, but right. you know, get get nice and stuff included. Yeah, um, that was probably it. Uh, you know, they're you know, it's it's not the majors, but it's a very fun yeah. night and get all the all the food included, all that. And, you know, I you there. I much prefer minor league pretty much everything because there's more activity involved and I don't like watching I like watching college football and that's about it on television but I'll go to like actual events and stuff like that um I the the minor league versions like it's like it is their job to make it entertaining and to incorporate different stuff and the fans and all sorts of different things so that's a great one I I hadn't even thought about that um well done. So, okay. Uh, how do people find, you've mentioned the website a couple times, but just one more time, how people find you uh, here at Fort Yargo, uh, social media, your, uh, who, whoever, whoever is, is over the, the, the gift shop area, visitor center of DNR, you are doing a great job. Um, the variety, I mean, it's not huge, but the variety and the stuff looks really cool. Like I walked around the gift shop two or three times this morning and was like, oh, I didn't see that. Oh, where did that come from? It's just stuff that, you know, t-shirts and mugs and stuff like that you've seen, but then other things that you're like, what is that? And that looks really neat. And where did you even get this? Um, so great job to whoever the gift shop person is or, or whatever for the uh, state parks. But how do people find you and, and get here, or get connected or call to make reservations for a, a, a cottage or a tent site or whatever? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, for Fort Yargo, for every state park in Georgia, you can go to gastateparks.org and uh, you can find information on events, uh, reservations. You can reserve for any state park in, in Georgia from that website. Uh, there's also going to be a specific page on there for our park that you can go on there to find those events. It'll have our phone number and stuff as well. Our phone number is 770-867-3489. So if you prefer to talk on the phone, you can call us and make uh, reservations directly there or just have any questions. And we also are on Facebook. Uh, I believe it's just Fort, uh, Fort Yargo State Park. Okay. Um, and this is a bonus feature for everybody to say till the end. Is there a best camping site in your opinion? Ooh. Because I've, I've found that most of the people that like, you know, the, the, the uh, 
park staff, like there's like one or two places they're like, oh yeah, if I was gonna do it, it'd be that one. Yeah. Um, Insider tip. So I think honestly, uh, sites eight through 12, those are kind of on their own sort of little street next next to a little past the uh, tent walk-ins mm -hmm. and it's, it's along the uh, the lake. So you get a little bit of a mixture of the lake view, but you have a, in slightly more, slight more isolation, but not total isolation. Yep. It's kind of, kind of a good mix. Awesome. There you go. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, w William, I, I, you've got some sort of wilderness exploring or office work or something to do. Yes. <laughs> I'm certain <starting> today. <laughs> so uh, I really appreciate your time and just sharing your story. This is the North Georgia Life Podcast. Embrace life where you live.